Thomas, number 13, it's Dan Moosebach, and outside of him. In the Liars' Den, number 47, Mike Weir. Second row inside. And the Wizza Industries, number two, it's Pat Hacksaw Heaney, and outside of him. In the Mufflers and Pipes entry from Waukesha, co-sponsored by Chuck Service, 33, Mike Marshall. Third row inside in the Robert Service, number 44, Bobby Waltho. And alongside of Bob, in the Capital Mud Jacking, number 75, Don Kabanak. Fourth row inside. In Oak Creek Estates, number 10, Bob Gutnick, and alongside him in the Schleeper's Speed Shop, number 20, Danny Meck. Final row inside in the Borchard Speed Automotive, one, Al Teachin, and outside of Teachin from Waterford, Wisconsin. In car 155, it's Lee Soans. Mike Phelps giving us the one lap to go signal. Moose, Bach, and Weir, two of the young lions on the sportsman circuit, occupy row number one. Then it's Heaney, several years experience under his belt, Marshall right alongside. Al Teachin, the defending champ in this one, way back inside of row number five, going in car number one. So this should be a good one as several of the hard chargers from the rear will try to take advantage of the youngsters on the circuit. We'll watch the outcome. Danny Moosebach from Grafton on the pole as we're set to go green. Full fendered action on the Pro Star Sportsman Circuit, one of the finest in the nation, competing on the clay each and every Saturday night here at Hales. Moosebach gets a jump on Weir. Heaney goes third in car number two, but now being pressured by 44 Walfo. Heaney looks inside of Weir as Weir drifts high in the corner. Heaney gets a tap on the rear bumper from Walfo as Heaney will advance to the number two spot in car two. Weir comes right back after him as he tries to work inside of Heaney. All the while, Moose Box getting away from the battling duel that becomes a trio with the presence of number 44, Bobby Walfo. Walfo now works inside a weir and puts him back to fourth. As Walfo's on the move, he sets sail for Heaney's number two. Very smoothly out in front of the event is Danny Moosebach in car 13. Heaney using the outer cushion of the speedway now closes in to some degree on 13 Moosebach, your race leader. After starting inside the last row, already advancing to the number five spot and has his sights set on Mike Weir's number 47. Once again, Bobby Walfo mounts a challenge to Heaney. In fact, Walfo will go to the number two spot as Moosebach makes a miscue. Two cars, Mech and Soans, get together up in corner number three, and it's probably going to produce a yellow flag situation. Soans refires his automobile, but there's parts hanging down from the underside of Lee Soans' machine. I'm sure it's going to necessitate a lift truck. 13, Moosebach, your race leader at the halfway point, but does he have a bunch of hard chargers on his rear bumper? Bobby Walfo, as impressive as I've seen him ever here at the Hales Corner Speedway in car 44. He currently rides in the number two spot. Then it's Heaney, Teach and Weir. They're all there. Set the goal at the halfway point. Moosebach with cars on each side. Heaney works to the top. Waffles under him. The sparks fly. They straighten out. Here comes Teachin up the outer groove of the speedway. A real barn burner shaping up. Here's Teachin goes to the top. Battling with Moosebach for second. Heaney continues to set the pace. But Moosebach now getting a handle on the number 13 car. Battles with number one Teachin for second. 
Heaney continuing to run high on the speedway. Moosebach thwarting Deachin's attempts as the laps wind down. Moosebach slowly but surely catching Heaney who's running in the outer groove. Heaney gets a jump, exit in the corner, only to have Moosebach close in as they head down in the corner number three. Two laps to go. Heaney still sets the pace, but now Teachin gets into Heaney big time, slowing Heaney. Heaney's automobile slowed, possibly Pat having a mechanical problem, and now it's the youngster versus the veteran as Moosebach on the inner groove of the speedway and teaching on the outside new battle, only to see the event go yellow as Pat Heaney's automobile did in fail, fact fail on the back chute. So one of the most competitive sportsman heat race events of the season comes to a halt with an obvious mechanical problem in Pat Heaney's number two. Pat has been plagued all season long with differential and axle problems, I wouldn't doubt once again Heaney's automobile let down in that department. 13, Dan Moosebach with two laps separating him from a checkered flag. Couple other people in the field wishing to rearrange his plans as one, Teachin wastes no time going to work on the youngster from Grafton. Teachin turns up the wick on the Borchardt Speed Automotive Machine. Teachin slides high in the corner. Moosebach masterfully on the bottom of the track holds the champ at bay. Teaching, entering the corner, much more under control this time, but once again, he and Moosebach do battle. Teaching with the power, obviously. Outgunning Moosebach on the shoots to have the youngster battle back in the corners. One, Teaching will win it. Moosebach will finish second, 44, Wolf the third, and 10, Bobby Gutnick rounding out the top four. So a great ride by both the champion, Al Teachin, and the challenger, Danny Moosebach, but whiskers prevailing is Teachin with his years and years of experience, 20 years in our book, winning the first sportsman heat of the evening. Al Teachin will roll down, pick up his checkered flag of victory from Edwitz Venus Ford aboard his Borchard Speed Automotive, Ratke Salt, number one. Nice big round of applause, Al Teachin, he earned it. Accurate fabrication and welding and coffee trailer also helping teaching along, as does Justice Brothers Automotive Products.